Hi guys, welcome back to another video or hello if you are new. Today's video is going to be five tips on writing engaging romance novels. Now, it's going to be a fun video because I am going to be sharing some examples from my upcoming novel that I've been working on for like a year. You guys know I've been working on my Christmas novel for some time now. So I'm going to be giving you guys some examples from that novel. And um, I haven't even shared the title. I haven't shared much about the novel. So I think it's going to be a fun video and I hope you guys find it helpful. So without further ado, let's dive in. So the first tip is all about the development of the characters. The characters are the heart and soul of any romance. So it's important to develop them in a way that the readers can connect and relate to them. Give them some unique personalities and backgrounds and motivations and make sure that they have strengths and weaknesses and put them in situations where they must grow and change. So as far as giving your characters unique personalities and backgrounds and motivations, regarding my novel, this is what I did. I gave my main character, the female main character, my book is written from dual perspectives. So with her, I gave her a unique way of speaking and just a unique tone, especially when she is nervous or when she finds herself in difficult places. Then I moved on to creating her background story, I created an interesting backstory around where she grew up. Now, this also adds to the story. It's not random. It's not unrelated. It is related to the topic that I am writing about. So it just ties in nicely. Next, as far as her motivations, I created a Christmas obsessed character that is searching for the Hallmark movie Christmas um, Christmas of her life. So that again, I am writing a Christmas story. So this is related to the topic is related to the setting. It just brings it all in nicely. Tip number two is all about creating tension and conflict. These are such key elements in any romance novel that you cannot write it without having these two elements. It's what usually makes the story interesting and it keeps your readers engaged. So make sure that you create situations where the characters and goals or beliefs clash. This is going to force them to confront their feelings and their desires. So how did I do this in my own novel? Well, number one, I got really clear on both of my characters, the male and the female. I got really clear on their goals and their beliefs and how they clash. So for instance, my female character, her goal, like I said, is to have a Hallmark movie Christmas, to also be a pastry chef and to have the courage to speak up to things that bother her. Now, how did I create a clash? Well, the way she was raised, the way her, her whole life has been, it's completely opposite of all three of these things. So she doesn't celebrate Christmas in the way she loves. She is not a pastry chef and she never speaks up for what she wants, what she believes, um, to a fault. So that is one way that I created this character's goals and beliefs, and it, it wraps up nicely. Tip number three is all about using dialogue effectively. It is a powerful tool for all romance writing. It can reveal a character's traits, deepen relationships, move the plot forward. So make sure that your dialogue is realistic and it flows naturally. Use it to create tension, to reveal a character's motivation, and to deepen emotional connections. So I'm gonna give you an example from my own novel. Okay, so here's an example from my novel where I am using dialogue to move the story forward and where I am using dialogue to um, reveal an important aspect of the main character's life and her tra a trait of hers. So this is a scene where the main character, Eloise, is sitting with her best friend, Susie, and her best friend tells her, Eloise, she says, grabbing my hand, I'm not lucky. I just know what I want and I'm not afraid to go for it. I wanted a baby so I got pregnant. I wanted to raise my baby so I quit my job. I'm not afraid of making decisions because my parents will get mad at me. As you can see here, 
this is an important part of the story. Not only are we moving the character forward, the story forward by revealing that her best friend is pregnant, that she has just quit her job, that she is a very decisive person that she lives lives on her on life on her own terms but now we are also showing that Eloise is the complete opposite of that that she is not making decisions or living life on her terms and that she is afraid of her parents so that is an effective way of using dialogue the next tip we've all heard before is the show don't tell this is a classic writing rule but it is especially important in romance writing so instead of telling readers how characters feel show it through their actions their thoughts and dialogue just like i did this will create deeper emotional connections for the reader and make the story actually even more engaging okay so this is a part in the novel where this is a point of view from the male character and he is alone with the main character Eloise and he's observing her. Instead of just telling us what's happening, I created a scene where I show you what is happening. So it goes like this. Eloise and I are alone and I can't help but feel like a moth drawn to light. My eyes lock on her, taking in every detail. I watch as she squirms under my gaze, but she doesn't look up. Instead, she pretends the mixer needs her full attention. I'm okay with that. It gives me the freedom I need to look at her. Every curve and line of her face seems to be perfectly crafted, like a work of art. She's even more beautiful than I remember. That's just a little clip from a little scene that I pulled out from the novel regarding the show not tell aspect. I hope you found it helpful. Now let's move on to the last tip. Tip number five is about setting the scene. It is important in every story, but it's especially important in romance novels. You should use it to create an atmosphere and a mood that definitely matches the vibe of your story and make it feel almost like a character in the story. So make sure you use descriptive language to paint a picture that readers' minds can be transported to a different place and time and I am going to share with you an example of my own novel right now. So this is a scene where my main character is describing where he's headed. So it goes like this. Pineville, nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains, is a picturesque town where time seems to slow down. The streets are lined with quaint shops, each with their own unique charm. The air is crisp and fresh, carrying the scent of pine trees and wood burning stoves. So as you can see, this does create a picture of where he's headed, what it feels like, what it smells like, what it looks like. So I thought that was a good um, description of the town. All right, you guys, I hope you found these tips helpful. I know that writing a novel can be challenging, but I also know that it's very rewarding. You just have to, you know, work on your craft and just, you know, focus on maybe some of the things that I mentioned here today. If you are struggling or if you just want to make it stronger, you know, try developing strong characters and remember to focus on creating tension and conflict and make sure that you use your dialogue effectively and, you know, focus on or work on the show instead of telling aspect of writing which is actually something that's usually really hard for me also make sure that you make time to create an inviting setting and scene for your readers so that they feel like they are part of it remember that tip i, I love this one tip um, about making the scene almost a part of as a character that you are you know, uh, exploring and sharing with the reader. So yeah, I will be sending this manuscript to the editor this month. I am almost finished with it. I cannot believe it's taken this long, but I am really taking my time. The last time I did a video, I told you I was on my third draft. I am now in my fourth draft, halfway through it. So hopefully I can get it to her soon. And once I do that, I'll be working on my query to, because I will be querying this to agents and just see what happens there. So if you want to stay in the know, make sure you not only that you're subscribed, but that you sign up to my newsletter because I will be sharing all the updates there first. So if you want to be in the know as far as when this novel is coming out, the title, how it's going with my literary agent, how it's going with traditional publishing, all the things, make sure that you sign up and that you also uh, subscribe to the channel because I will be updating you guys 
frequently. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful and I will see you in a brand new one next time. Until then, God bless you.